Hello and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekend, the show I'm Mal Lee, your host for this evening. Well, not like I say every other evening because we had the young commentators on last night and I was trying to get them not to bring me in to the show. But young Dan, what's he like? He'll always bring you into the show no matter what. I want to try and make it the kids' show itself. They'll learn, they'll get there. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, they didn't mention last night, they may have a little celebrity for two of them on the show next week, their first. I wonder how they'll handle that. They've gone away and they're doing the homework on this particular person, so um, I'll keep you informed. I'll let you know exactly what's going on. Um, maybe during the week, let's go from there. Anyway, we were out and about today. Um, last night it was teamed down yet again. Plenty of rain and people are starting to think, wow, grassroots pitches, they could start to get it again, but hey ho, no, perfect. Well, I don't know about your league or whatever you're playing. Um, I don't know whether your games went ahead, but these certainly did. And uh, it looks, they look fine. Sunshine come out. We had a nine o'clock kickoff. Um, and the sun was beaming down. It was pretty warm. And I just thought it was going to be raining all day. But hey ho, it didn't. And it was just one of those atmospheres first thing in the morning. They always are. Nine o'clock in the morning kickoff. Um, where they Kids are getting up out of bed very early, too early, and they just can't get into a game of football. They can't get the mo motivation going, like most of us. Like most of us, but um, what you do, you carry on, you get there in the end. And we had a tough game. I must admit, it's our toughest game of the season so far, five weeks in. Um, and it was nice, you know, it was good. Um, we ended up winners, but um, all credit to St George's Tigers. Um, they put up a spirited fight and there was a few nice tackles going in as well. Uh, believe me, for um, under sevens, it's unreal. They understand the game of football, they know they've got to win at all costs, or the ball at all costs. These are kids, we're not telling these kids what to do. And you just hope that they develop, but um, when it comes to football, boy, they know the score, don't they? They all want that ball, they all want to play the game. and. Um, I don't know what it was with today's games, it was um, plenty of referees short, um, I think it's illness, it was definitely 100% not abusive that they were all gone because there was plenty of managers standing in to referee for the games, which you have to do if the games don't go ahead um, and the team save, save money. It's simple as that isn't it, if there's no games you save in your pocket because the managers do the games themselves anyway. Happens to be um, a good day for it. But as I say, plenty of referees did not turn up and it's just because it was commitment or illness, I could tell on that. You could see, you know, even talking to the committees, there was a few cried off, not well. When we say cried off, no, they, I think that's just an expression that we do on Merseyside, cried off. And um, what we mean by that is um, they cried off. <laughs> well, that's us, that's us, you know what I mean? That's our comments and we stick to it. And it's um, even, even the ones who cried off would agree with that part, I'll have to cry off, they'll always say it the same, anyway, it's just an expression um, in the Scouts language, I suppose. Anyway, Grace walking around, talking to Bob, the committee, Connor, and the ladies on the committee themselves, they were great, they, Julie and Rachel were superb, everyone had a little go there, um, and the cafe was absolutely heaving, and the staff were short staffed there, I must admit, and they've got it all to face again tomorrow. Never seen it so busy in all my life. And I don't mean maybe because there was new staff coming in and getting used to the ropes and things, but they were very, very patient. Everyone stood in that queue, I must admit. Um, and there was no animosity, people talking, people shaking hands. And that's the way it should be in grassroots football, isn't it? Um, so when we talk about no ref, no game, it certainly was today. Um, but the games went ahead, uh, managers covered and stood in there because the kids have to play, don't they? Imagine telling all the kids there's no referee, you'd have to go home. That's just another expression, isn't it? No ref, no game. It means it's a different game, it really is. And we had it today um, where my lad had to referee the game and you knew it's not the same thing, it really isn't. And even his own lads in and said, Dad, blow the whistle. <laughs> it's one of those things, isn't it? You know what I mean? I, I, I love it. Kids are kids because they're expecting the referee there, aren't they? So they get used to it. Um, good little game, as I say. Great. Um, 
two teams, tough teams, and they fought head to head. But I was enjoyed the the final result. It was one of those things, wasn't it? You don't need to name goals or how many goals at the moment. Just that we won. Um, maybe towards the end of the season, we'll look at it that way. Um, but we certainly not put out um, any sort of scores unless it's a really, really close one, you know. And it goes, um, not saying it wasn't close, it was today. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we picked up five out of five uh, wins. Um, kids are doing okay, but as I say, it wasn't the same. I think the atmosphere, you know, when you get up in the morning, you don't feel the same yourself, do you? Um, so that also is the same thing for children. They, they don't feel the same. And hopefully uh, they all get home nice, safe and well. Because there was a couple coughing. Uh, just little coughs and niggly coughs and you get that and you wonder what the weather's bringing in now because there'll be something else crop up soon you watch another illness that we've all got to be facing and be wary of and we just wait for the government now to to state that anyway whatever you're doing or whatever your games were i hope your games went exactly the same was around the league no problems talking to bob absolutely great enjoyable football everyone was enjoying themselves talking to managers who praised one of the refs so connor if you're watching one of those teams, they absolutely adored it. Everything about you was fantastic. So there you go, some lovely feedback because they knew, you were sit knew I was sitting there and um, I was just wondering how much Connor paid more. But anyway, no, it wasn't. And I've seen Connor referee as well and I understand where they're coming from. Explains to the kids, explains to the managers why he's given the free kick, why he, you know it shouldn't be, and, and talks to them and say, you know, can you calm that down? It's great. Absolutely superb. I've seen Connor quite a few times refereeing and he's well deservedly um, I should be a nominated referee for our award next year. Really should. Anyway, food for thought. But out and about at the grounds and uh, the Geoffrey Humboldt, North Liverpool JFL, that's where they play from and I was looking at the girls league as well. Um, they're, they're playing from there. I'm not too sure who runs that league actually because they all come to the committee on the North Liverpool and ask them what pitch they're on but um, can't find them, never can find a committee for the girls football. Anyone got any ideas who is running that Saturday league there with the girls at Geoffrey Humble um, because no one seems to know what pitches they're on, what referees they've got, if they had any because I noticed managers were doing their games as well. Um, but. Yeah, I'd like to know, please. Maladontextheline.com. Add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or the social network sites. Please get in touch. Anything that went on in your leagues, was it all good? No ref, no game? Did referees turn up? Was the games? It should have been, because the sun was glorious, I must admit. And this is my first cup of tea, actually, would you believe? My first cup of tea, all day. Ah, that's lovely. Just enjoying it, um, whenever you are, I'm sure you are as well, because the Premier League is back and we have a tough one tomorrow, Liverpool versus Manchester City. The lads get their forecast last night. 3-3 was one of them. I don't think um, that will be the case because I don't think they're too open. If they can blow, both step up the game, especially Liverpool, I think after that 7-1 um, thrashing of Rangers midweek, um, Man City drawing 0-0. You don't, they do still rub off, you know, they really do. And we didn't have far to go, did we, Liverpool, Scotland? I don't know whether they flew there, flew back, because it's been 20 minutes, I suppose. Um, and they looked they looked pretty sharpish, to be honest. That was the best I've seen Liverpool, even though you could say, oh, yeah, it wasn't the likes of Man City, though. Yeah, we know Man City are playing well, but, but we get an early goal. You know what happens then, it's... Um, it changes the game and, and we were the only team. I know we've got injuries, but the lads know that they're taking over now. And Joe Gomez, I've always noticed Gomez, when he comes on as a substitute, I don't know whether you've, you've seen the same thing as, as a red. I hope you forgive me for just going on a little bit about Liverpool at the moment. Um, we haven't played the way we should be playing. And I just think it was a tough season last season. And now they're just getting back into the swing of things. All the players, it was the whole team wasn't just one person but going back to Joe Gomez and, and one or two other players you know yourself if you're sitting in subs all the time and you've got someone going in before you who recommended as a better player or they play that game and then suddenly they get injured and your chance comes up and you know you've got a few weeks of football I think it lifts your game and I've noticed when that happens and 
Arnold's coming out and Joe Gomez, Gomez steps in, he seems to up his game. He really does. He seems to play like, I'm going to show myself now. I've got a few weeks to play football. Got some Champions League games, got some Cup games, got some, you know, League, Premier League games, and he's got a big one tomorrow. So, again, let's just hope he steps up. Uh, Van Dijk looked the part. Um, one or two others, Mo Salah, what a hat-trick. I thought that was absolutely unbelievable there, the way he took those goals. And it just gave him that little bit of confidence because it boosted him. Well, Bobby, he can score goals from anywhere. He can't be in a game and then suddenly he pops up. And I love his ball skills. You know, when that ball comes 107 mile an hour and he just puts his foot out and controls it. I, I think he's one of the best players for control at speed that you'll ever see. And then he can turn and he seems good on the ball. He's hard to get off the ball. And his goal scoring now. And he's just calm as, as they come. And good luck. And let's just hope Bobby is on fire tomorrow. They're all on fire. Allison's due a really, really hot game. Good game. Let's hope that one comes tomorrow as well. And you could say, well, Liverpool, probably the only team that's beat Manchester City. In, in, and it was at Wembley. And that was, do you know what? That was a really, really tough game. And a good game, but at the end of the day, victorious, and um, you can always you can you got the bragging rights for that one. So let's just see how that game goes. I really can't put a, a score on it at the moment. Maybe tomorrow when I thought a little bit more about it because it's still another day yet, and you don't know whether you're going to get any more injuries. So you try, tend to hold back and just see. But I'm a little bit more confident than what it would be if Liverpool just scraped through against Rangers. But it wasn't. It was a solid performance. And if we can give that solid performance tomorrow, more attack and flair, and everyone is 100% on the ball, getting there before Man City, then we're in with a shout, and we've got to go for it. We really do have to. Anyway, um, Everton, they play um, tonight, 5 o'clock. Tottenham, that's not tough. That's a tough game for them as well. Um, they haven't themselves, Everton haven't really hit ball. I must admit, you know, Tottenham will go out there and they'll go at them. Everton will be back to the wall and just hope they get something out of it because they're not playing well and they're not. And look at me, as you said, last week we were both beaten. Um, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man United for Everton. It was just one of those weeks, so maybe we could be victorious this weekend. So Everton beat Tottenham, we beat Man City. I'll be happy with that, I really will. Um, because our teams need to lift up. Anyway, if you were out, that's a bit about the Premier League and our local teams for us. Um, I don't need to go into any other teams, do I? Sorry if I haven't mentioned your team, but uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy the game when you go there or watch it on TV, whichever it may be. It's a lovely weekend. It looks like it's going to be a nice weekend. And let's just hope it's nice for football again tomorrow. That's what I'm looking forward to. Um, and I think everyone else should be looking forward to it because it's all about kids playing football. It's all about the kids enjoying themselves. It's all about encouragement. And that's what it is. Every one of us should give encouragement. encouragement. So as I've done on today's post today, where they explained, and I did say, if the kids need coaching, leave. Please leave that to the coach. If there's a foul committed on the field of play, right or wrong in your eyes, leave that to the referee. And if encouragement is needed, what more can we say? You don't need reminding. The kids need the encouragement. And that goes for each and every one of us, whether it be myself, managers, parents, coaches, committee members, every child who's playing that football needs encouragement, needs to be talked to, needs to be geared up and needs to be what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. That's the way it should be. Not wrong, but what you can do better. You know, if we all wear together, team effort, fantastic. The kids will enjoy grassroots, fo grassroots football more. And I didn't hear much shouting today, I must admit, the North Liverpool. I heard a lot of applause, nothing against passion, love passion in grassroots football. But it seemed to be a little bit subdued, whether it was just because early kickoffs and the sun was shining and people were just loving it and enjoying the game and having a, a chat because it wasn't cold and that makes a difference. But I'd love to hear whatever you are, whatever you've been, what your league was up to today, what your team was up to. Did the teams enjoy it? Did the kids enjoy it? Because what I saw today at the North Liverpool GFL, brilliant, fantastic. Everyone was in a talking mood. 
Um, and as I say, not much animosity. We're talking to one or two referees. Actually, I did talk to a manager who said his parent um, took charge of a game. And he just made a, a, a joking comment, and um, I think um, his, his wife of the of the manager, who well not manager, parents who was referee in the game, TBS checked, of course, um, didn't like it. So he was like, "Oh, it's only a bit of banter, honestly. I don't mean it, you know. I know he's not a referee, and I've got up, but um, he got told off, and that's funny, isn't it? Because um, the manager was making a comment." to a parent who was refereeing and there was fight back there. So it tells you, doesn't it? It's all in the water, it's all in the blood. Something is in the water. Um, because, as I say, I've, I've seen so many posts on social media about oh, referees being verbally abused, um, walking away from the game, putting in reports. I don't think... I, I can't wait to see the referees, uh, the county FA's reports, how many new referees are on board who are refereeing each week, how many have walked away from the game, how many walked away from the verbal abuse? We need the figures, and we should have monthly figures on that. I think. I think it should be waited till end of season. If we can have monthly figures, it'll give us an idea as to what's happened, and surely it'll give them a map an idea as to where all the trouble leagues, if there are trouble leagues, are having problems, and they can iron them out. Yeah, because, as I say, don't cross the line. Going into our twentieth year. We've been having problems, haven't we, right the way through. We did say it's going to take more than 20 years to try and solve this. And look where we are. We're into our 20th year in December, late December. And we're not far wrong. We're still combating um, abuse on and off the field of play. Uh, we need to get rid of it. We need to get rid of the irate spectators, irate parents, and just have people who want to go and support their children there. I think everyone's getting the message. We need to pray, portray the message. We need to get that message across. If the referee does make a decision, gets it wrong, then so be it. It's all about that, you know. Um, you can't really go. You need to wear together, and the kids will enjoy it more as well. Can't wait to start some interviews on the children, asking them the question, what did they like about football? I've done that a couple of years ago, and I wonder what the answer would be again and now. So we'll try that. And I'll come back to you and I'll note out you'll hear them and see them and we'll go from there, eh? Anyway, we haven't got long, I just have another sip of my tea because I was enjoying it. I, I've waited a long time for this. And as you may have seen as well with our posters, don't bully the ref. That's what it's all about. It's a campaign and we should need to get this on. It doesn't matter who's in the middle. Please, male, female, whoever it is, they're there to do a job and we'd like yourselves to work with us and make sure that we keep our referees within the game. And there's many, many, many young referees just starting out now. And always remember they're a little bit nervous on their first games. You can tell, you can see them, you don't have to look and they're looking for encouragement. So the referees do need that encouragement as well as the kids on and off the field of play. Keep them in the game, keep the kids playing, keep the kids smiling and keep the parents smiling. With weather like this today, I think that is a win-win-win at all costs. And it was in my league or our league, and I say my league because I have GXL FC Lions playing there. Doing a good job at the moment and we need to portray the message to them as well. I wanted to get these out for our referee but unfortunately our referee wasn't well and we had to do the game ourselves. So... Um, Goes without saying, doesn't it? That's what it's all about. Working together, being together and enjoying football together. The kids will go home happy. And they're already going home. We all talked about it today. Something that goes on the pitch or off the pitch, whatever it is. The kids will forget about it half an hour later. That game's gone. They're all onto something else then. They're all wondering what they're going to be doing a little bit later on. It's, it's the parents who prolong it, carry it on and start saying what you should do, what you shouldn't do. We all need to work together and be as one, don't we? So there you go, this is our second day gone. I hope you enjoyed the kids' show last night, and I do hope that you enjoyed a little bit of banter, a little bit of gabbing off me today. But if you've got anything that you'd like Don't Cross the Line to know about, please don't hesitate to get in touch with myself, mal at don'textheline.com. Let's hear about it, whether it's positive or negative, please, but don't be swearing any.
if you don't mind. We'll see you again tomorrow evening at 7pm. So from myself, Marlene, all the team here at the Grassroots Show, Don't Cross the Line, Respect Campaign, and also our Heart of Gold initiatives, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great and peaceful evening. Relax, put your feet up, and watch some nice movies, or even the football if you've recorded it. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.